Hey guys, Charlie here at KC Turbos. Today we're gonna to be talking about air to fuel ratio and how it relates to diesels. It doesn't get talked about very much and it's not used in tuning, or at least it hasn't been used very much in tuning. But as people are progressing and learning more, we are using air to fuel ratio more and more for tuning. And uh, air to fuel on a diesel can affect a lot of things, but let me first start with gas applications, or if you're on E85 or methanol, they have a very small window in which they can operate on the air to fuel ratio. And if they get richer or leaner than that, they can have major problems. They can lean out the motor and blow it up, be too rich and blow it up. They've got a very fine window in which the tuners have to tune to keep those cars safe. So with diesels, does that matter? Yes and no. A lot of guys don't care, but you can use it to your advantage to help increase your horsepower, lower your smoke, and lower your EGTs. So if you look at this graph we have here, you'll see that there's different zones that we have marked. You'll see that there's a parabola looking curve, uh, high in the middle, low on the left and the right. That is your EGT curve, or it's also your NOx curve. Uh, they follow the same trend line, but you can see that it's got high point in the middle, low on the right and the left. Well, what is that high point? That tends to be the smoke limit. That's where you start to see smoke. It starts to get a little smoky. Anything to the right of that line is gonna run cleaner and cleaner. Anything to the left of that line is gonna get smokier and smokier. These are broken up in different color zones. Let's start with the green zone. That's where the stock trucks tend to run or stock diesels tend to run. That's the 20 or about 22 to one area. And what that means is it's 20 parts of air per one part of fuel. So that's pretty clean running. Uh, for example, gassers are usually in the 12 to 14 range, depending on what kind of vehicle and how it's tuned. So 20 to one is much leaner, or you have more air than you do fuel. Uh, if you add a little bit fuel to that same truck, let's say you run in the same turbo, the same amount of air, the same amount of boost, and you add a little bit of fuel, you'll increase power. But it'll start to run hotter and smokier. You'll see as you move to the left of the green area, you get into what's the orange area or, or the safe tuning area. But you'll see that the uh, EGTs and the NOx start to go up. It's typically what we call the safe tuned area. A lot of times you add a tune to your truck, it'll still pass emissions. You don't see a ton of smoke, maybe a hint of smoke every once in a while, but you'll notice a big bump in the EGTs. If you keep going to the left, you'll see the smoke limit. It's around 16 to one, maybe 17 to one. At that point, you've got a smoky truck. You'll see a lot of smoke at wide open throttle and your EGTs will be really high. That's where a lot of really hot tunes run or back in the day when people used to run really heavy tunes without a DPF or maybe too big of injectors, too small of a turbo. They tend to run very smoky and very hot. And all they do gain power, you are losing your bang for your buck. If you just add too much fuel on top of that air, yes, you do gain a little bit of power, but you're gaining mostly smoke after you get past the stock tune or the safe tune zone. So what's that blue area? That's where a lot of guys push for in competitions. You see a sled pull in a truck, you ask yourself, why are they running so smoky? I've seen comments all the time. Oh, look at all that wasted power. Those guys are idiots. You know, look at all that smoke. There's actually a strategy to it. As you get to the left of that smoke limit that you see, you can see the easy cheese start to go back down. You're actually cooling the cylinder down with large amounts of fuel. And that can be a strategy in competitions. And if you see, they're still in that four, 12 to 14 to one range. And what's interesting about that is 12 to 14 to one on a diesel is very smoky. But on a gas, it's about what they run. That's just average. So a lot of people see the smoke and think, oh man, they're running really rich. Well, that's about as rich as what a gas car will run, which is very interesting. So you do make a little bit more power in that range, but a lot of times the reason they do that is you can actually cool the vehicle back down. So I left the best for last. If you look all the way to the right in the, what I call the unicorn zone, uh, a lot of the newer or bigger drag racers now have been talking about this. Uh, guys like LaVon Miller, Ryan Milliken, and a lot of other guys have talked about air to fuel ratio and running leaner, leaner than stock, less smoke than stock, and you run less EGTs. I know it sounds a little counterintuitive, but if you go farther and farther to the right, you run cooler EGT. So if you start adding more and more air to clean up that fuel, you'll actually decrease your EGTs and decrease your smoke and can help those engines last longer. Pass, 
but how do you get to that unicorn zone? Why is it called the unicorn zone? Typically on a turbo only or supercharger only application, it's really hard to get into that area. You just can't cram enough air in that motor to get it to run that lean. You gotta remember that turbochargers are driven by the heat and pressure coming out of the cylinder. More heat and fuel that comes out of that engine will drive the turbine wheel harder. When you drive the turbine wheel harder, it drives the compressor harder, raises your boost, forces air into the motor, and it just keeps going round and round. It's interesting to think that the same air going into the engine is powering the turbine wheel. Well, what's the problem with that? You typically can't drive turbos hard enough to get into that uh, unicorn range, which is above about 22 or 23 to one. Now, when you're cruising, light throttle, idling, yes, you can get there. But typically at wide open throttle, racing, going down the track, making any amount of power, it's really hard to get up in that range. Uh, compounds can get you closer there, triples can get you closer there, but even those really struggle to get into that 26, 27, or even 28 to one air to fuel ratio, which is the sweet spot in cooling things down. So how do people get into that 26, 27, 28 to one if the turbocharger can't put enough air in the motor? Nitrous. Diesels love nitrous, and when used properly, it's actually very safe. I personally don't run meth on my trucks or water injection, although I know some people do. I like nitrous. If you use it properly, it's safer. It'll help your truck to run cooler and greatly increase your power. So you can spray your truck well past 22 to one with nitrous, but it takes a lot of nitrous to get there. So at a certain point, you literally burn off all the fuel you have left in the cylinder and you keep adding more nitrous and you keep leaning that out, your EGTs will go down, your engine will be happier, your uh, NOx will go down, it'll all run better and make more power. So, that's what a lot of guys have been doing these days, and they've been talking a lot about it in the drag racing world, and it's starting to carry over into other areas, is running leaner and cleaner is better. You'll actually make more power per amount of fuel injected. Yes, as you add more fuel, you can make more power, but as you add more air, you can make more power. And there are diminishing returns. As you get from uh, 24 to one to 26 to one, it's not gonna be the same gains as going from 18 to 20 to one. As you get leaner and leaner, you will gain less power per amount of nitrous or air that you add, but there still are gains to be had. Uh, I've heard and there's rumors that about 27, 28 to one is about the limit. I've seen 30 to one in our race truck, nothing happened, but uh, I read a post by LaVon Miller one day and he said that as he went above 28 to one, he actually ran too lean, put the fire out in the motor and the truck missed. And under that heavy load, I think it hurt some stuff. So you gotta kind of watch that area. Some of you might be asking, how do you know what your air to fuel ratio is? And there are actually gauges you can install in your truck and use them for data logging. You can use them with your tuner or your tuning that read the air to fuel ratio. And it's becoming more and more advantageous. I think you're gonna start seeing it a lot more in trucks, race trucks, or even street trucks. I wish from the factory that it monitored that and spit out that number. Why the OEs haven't done it yet, I don't know. Maybe during the development of their tuning, it's there, or maybe when they're developing the truck on the dyno and figuring out how it works, it's there. But I think you'll start seeing it as a normal PID or something that's able to be data logged and used for tuning. As a recap, if you take X amount of air and you keep the air the same as you add more fuel, power will continue to go up. Now there's diminishing returns if you add way too much fuel, but there is gains to be had. But if you do the opposite and take the same amount of fuel and add more and more and more air, you will also increase power. Uh, same as the other way, there's diminishing returns. But the cool thing about running more and more air is you'll see less smoke, you'll have cooler EGTs, you'll waste less fuel, and your engine tends to run much happier. Obviously, if you add more fuel and more air, that's the best way to increase your power the most. But people tend to run into EGT issues if you go too far that uh, down the middle is what I like to call it. If you go right down the middle and you add the same amount of air and the same amount of fuel, you'll see higher and higher and higher EGTs. At some point, you typically have a tipping point. You gotta either overfuel it or you gotta add a lot of extra air so you don't end up right in the middle of that parabola with high EGTs. You start melting stuff, hurting things, uh, too much engine cylinder temps and too much heat. Uh, I am still learning myself, but I found this very interesting. If you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us in the comments, send us an email at sales at caseyturbos.com or give us a call.